Hey out there, rock and rollers. Welcome to the 84th edition of the Ugly American Werewolf in London Rock Podcast, where we try to bring the U.S. rock fan, the U.K. fan perspective, and vice versa. Hosted by me, Mac B., the wolf, an American expat living in London who misses his record collection more than his friends and family. And we want to thank you all for tuning in last week, show number 83, where I got to review the Rolling Stones live in Hyde Park in front of about 85,000 people. My first Stones show in 16 years. And just the biggest rock show I've been to in I don't know how long. I know I went to see U2, I think, on the 360 tour. I, know I did see U2 in a stadium for the Joshua Tree 30th anniversary tour. But this is the biggest show I've been to in a long time. Certainly the biggest show since I've been on this side of the pond, though the Slain Castle show with Metallica and Ghosts and Stiff Little Fingers was pretty big. Uh, but at any rate, it was just a great night out for me. I got to take my child, who I've been trying to indoctrinate into rock and roll since before she was born, used to sing to her in the womb. You gotta get to them early, folks. You gotta get that rock and roll in their bones before they even know that it's there. And it was just a beautiful night. It was so much fun. We've got a lot of great downloads and comments from it. So we appreciate you listening and offering up your reviews and, and uh, thoughts and any videos and uh, stuff you may have shared on social media. We're uh, mostly on Twitter. It's at Ugly underscore Werewolf and at ActionJack72. We're trying to dabble a little bit in Instagram. And we are on YouTube trying to put more videos up on there. You have to understand that Jax and I were and are social media phobic. Certainly before we ever got the show going, we did not participate, but we realize it's a valuable way to, to reach out and engage with people. So we're trying our best to, to up that. And any anything you can do to help us by following us or liking us or giving us positive reviews wherever you get your podcasts, be it Good Pods, Amazon, Apple, iTunes, Spotify, anywhere you get them. If you think about it, please give us a positive review because it just helps us find more rock fans like you. And for those who don't know, we do have a great new sponsor that's perfect for us. It's www.rarevinyl.com. Rarevinyl.com has, has an amazing reputation in this industry for finding and then delivering high-quality records, LPs, singles, CDs, DVDs, posters, whatever you want. They've got 250,000 different products in their warehouse and they ship all around the world. I've met their owners. I've met the record buying team. I've met the shipping team. I've met everybody. They're wonderful people who do an amazing job. They ship all over the world. And if you use the code podcast, you'll get 10% off of your order. And that should help with some shipping costs. You've got to go check them out, www.rarevinyl.com. They have another site, eil.com, that's been around a little longer. You can check that out as well. But we're thankful for their sponsorship. And we know that if you go to rarevinyl.com, you'll be blown away by all the stuff that they have there. Of course, I need to say that we are a member of the Pantheon Podcast family. You can check them out at Pantheon Pods or www.pantheonpodcast.com. About 100 different shows. I guarantee you find some you like. And we have been on a few of those shows or had guests on from other shows like Paul from Vintage Rock Pod and This Day Rocks. Like Tom and Zeus from Shout It Out Loudcast. And we're so glad that you guys are back in action. We missed you boys. Uh, and the new show was great. And I can't wait to hear the follow-up. Of course, Jay at The Hook Rocks uh, has an awesome show. Uh, and you should always listen to what Jay's up to. Because he's not only doing the classic stuff like us, but he's helping to break new bands as well. So... How do you follow up your first Stone show in 16 years that was a magical, special experience? Well, obviously, you go back and see them again next week, right? Because British summertime in Hyde Park, they have several of these each weekend going on for a few weeks. And yeah, if the Stones are going to play again, why not? I'll go back and check them out again. Wife and kid were elsewhere, so I can go solo this time and just kind of do it the way I wanted to. But it's not just all about me and my experience. This past weekend... Jackson got to go to the stadium tour with Joan Jett, Poison, Motley Crue, and Def Leppard that's been delayed by two and a half years here thanks to COVID. It's finally underway. And he too got to take his kid, his son, Jackson Mini Jackson, because he's technically Action Jackson Jr. and his father, Sr. That's Action Jackson Sr. So we're talking about Action the Third got to go here. But 
that was that was special for him, and that was what was so cool for me, uh, being able to take the wolf cub. So for Action to be able to take Action the Third with him to see this huge rock show in a stadium with tens of thousands of people, with bands that we grown up loving, maybe didn't love Poison, but they fit in on the bill really well, and they put on a heck of a show. So we're not going to be here to malign Poison. We've done that plenty in the past. We're here to talk up how great it was to be out at a huge show and how did they fit in with the other big acts. I think he encountered a good bit of rain and the, the show got delayed and, and maybe some people's sets got cut. But still, despite all that, it sounds like he had a great time. Uh, and so we're going to go ahead and get into that now here on the show. So it's The Wolf back with the Stones in Hyde Park for part two and Action Jackson in Jacksonville, Florida seeing the stadium tour with Joan Jett, Poison, Motley Crue, and Def Leppard right here on The Wolf. Let's get into the shows on this 4th of July. Today is the 4th of July, Jackson. Yep. Beautiful day here in the United States. It's hotter than the sun, but that's fine. It's great. Great to be alive. Great to be here. I already got the lawn mode, so I'm ahead of the game. Good for you. Good for you. Yeah, it's basically just Monday here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they're, I'm prob they're probably still a little sore about that over there. Uh, I don't know. I mean, if they had to be sore about every country, who eventually kicked them out. Uh, you know. <laughs> it would be a full-time job. Yeah, you know, I don't think they really care either way. <laughs> I kind of considered yesterday my 4th of July in a way, just because I went back to see the Stones in High Park, and so it was a gorgeous day. I'm like, all right, here I'm at. If you're going to go out and be with a bunch of wackadoos, which is kind of what 4th of July is, <laughs> or drinking and celebrating and have a good time, it's like that's basically what it was yesterday, although I didn't make a day out of it. I was, I was busy. I worked on the show all day, and then I took a break to kind of relax before you know, getting down to Hyde Park. And then I went down there for round two of the Stones. And I got to say, I'm glad I did. It, it was not, it was not a special a night because I wasn't with my family, right? It right. was my first time to Hyde Park. And I do think the set list night one was better than night two, although they had six different changes. Remember, I thought they might have four. And if I was really lucky, five different songs, they had six. So kudos to them. I was going to say, when you sent that to me yesterday, I on a text i was i was very i was impressed because i thought they wouldn't change it up that much but they i mean so you could have gone two separate times and been totally okay with that yeah yeah absolutely you know and i'm glad that i picked the one to go with my family the first one that that was the, you know the best one i also look i i the sound, I don't, I, the sound the second time for me, because I was kind of off, I got to tell you a little bit about where I was, but I was kind of off to the side where the sound maybe wasn't set up to hit us really well over there. The first night we mm -hmm. went, we were right there and it was, it was perfect. It was honest and it was, it, it sounded so darn good. So I don't want to say the band wasn't as good the second night, because I'm not even sure that that's true. Might have been better the second night. It's just my experience with the sound was very different between the two nights. Okay. Because I decided, okay, look, I don't have to worry about the kid. I can walk around and kind of get a little bit closer. I can go to the other side. You know, we were on the right side last time. So let's go to the left side. Go over there. I kind of got up close to where the uh, there's an elevated part for like the board and the mixer and things like that. Mm -hmm. So you get in behind that and nobody's really hanging out there because you can't really see anything, right? It's like you're behind this big thing. So it was a good place to chill for a while and kind of get a lay of the land. Then I'm like, okay, it's getting closer to time. Let me start walking up close. And I walked up real close. And it was like, it was so thick with people. I'm like, oh, I hate this. <laughs> I hate this. And if it had been in America when it was like 95 degrees and everyone was like Ugh. sweaty, it would have been just god awful. But thank God it was just a beautiful day. So eventually I just kind of, and then I just like, just get me to the fence. Get me to the wall to get me away from everybody. I'll just go put against the wall or whatever. You know, and, and so I finally weaseled that way. And then there was some food, restaurant kind of things, pop-ups set up by the fence. And then there was this small little berm, a tiny little grass pit against the fence, way on the left side, kind of under a tree between, like, it's like there should have been a restaurant or two there, but the, for whatever reason, there just weren't. And there weren't that many people there. So I said, great, I'll just come stand here. And it was nice because I wasn't necessarily in the sun or, or getting hit with it. Everyone over there was chill. There weren't people walking through us. There were people walking by on the, on the road next to us, 
or on the pathway, but that was like 25, 30 feet away from me. So I could kind of chill and kind of get ready for the show. Now, what I didn't realize is there's security right behind there. And when people would act up or people were out of control or they had to get people the hell out of there, they would come here and like move one of the fences and stick them out that way. So oh. I, that's why there weren't a whole lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> but that didn't happen a lot. That didn't happen a lot. But there were a couple times where this kid who was whacked out, I don't know what he was on, he, he bumped into me, and I grabbed him by the neck. I said, what's your problem? He said, ah! And then the security people started chasing after him. Like, oh, okay, I don't want to yeah. mess with that, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I was closer. I was closer, and I could make out the band a little bit better than I could the other time, just because the, we, we were more straight on, and it's just the mass of people and lights and everything. It was sometimes it's kind of hard to see, but because I was on the side, I could see Mick walking around. I could see Keith and Ronnie doing their thing. So it was it was mm-hmm. cool to get a second perspective, you know. Yeah, and and I can imagine that it would. And I was thinking about this when you said you were going to go. How much different it would be not having to have any kind of plan and not having to look out for anybody else. If you say, Hey, I think I want to walk over there. You walk over there. If you want to get closer, get closer. You don't have to worry about, Oh, what are we doing? Now? Like, I don't know. I don't know what we're doing right now. I kind of just, I'm just kind of going with the flow. So it's more like a, it's more like you're just into watching the show instead of making sure everybody's happy. Exactly. Yeah, no, you're right. Look at this age, I'm happy to go to a concert by myself, especially in 80,000 people or whatever it is. Cause it did end up selling out. The first one sold out a while before. When I did, when we recorded the show on last week's show, on the first show, the second show still had not sold out. So, uh, but by like Friday, it, it had, you know, so like Thursday was like kind of your last chance. And then by Friday, I think, I think it had. And, and then, I, but you could still maybe get overpriced ones on resale, but even those weren't gone, weren't there very long afterwards. So, but no, I, I was glad to go again. And when they mixed it up, I mean, I was impressed, you know, six different songs. It's like 30% of their set that they switched up. I mean, not I every- really wonder, I wonder, you know, you said it's sold out late. I wonder how many, how many people of the sellout were people like you, where you're like, you know what? I went to the first one, but eh, you know what? Let's go again. Uh, I was thinking about that and I was thinking, well, maybe if it's a thousand people, what if a thousand people went twice? Well, that's still, you know. That's still 84,000 people who had not been there. <laughs> you know, yeah, the it, it, it is cool. Yeah, I mean, I think I think you would have been happy had the set been pretty much the same, but the fact that they changed out so many songs, that was definitely worth the worth you going again. I certainly thought so, yeah. So they, they switched out what? They took out Street Fighting Man. They took out She's a Rainbow. They took out Can't You Hear Me Knocking took out living in a ghost town and, and Keith took out uh, he took out connection connection and slipping away so those six changed the first song instead of street fighting man they came out to get off my cloud which is funny just because I was making fun of it on last week's show <laughs> <laughs> they went here get off they my cloud <laughs> they, they did do it on purpose I know the stones listened to it and then that's what they that's what how they put their sets together based on what I said on this podcast that's that's obvious Absolutely. I think <laughs> That's obvious, but okay. But see, I but now, but I had to do this OCD thing, and I went back in a very technological way on four sheets of paper, and I wrote down, went through all the set lists of my eight Stone songs, and wrote down every song that I ever saw them do at the at the eight concerts that I've been to, and then um, you know counted you know how many songs I've seen the most and all that kind of thing, and get mm-hmm. off my cloud. That was the first time I'd ever heard Get Off My Cloud. Okay. So I'm glad, you know, I went back for that anyway. They played Angie. They played Angie on the fifth song, which I had never seen them play either. And I love Angie. Okay. I always yeah. want to have a girlfriend call Angie so I could sing that song to her, you know? So that's that's pretty cool. They did Like a Rolling Stone by Bob Dylan, and they introduced it with, you know, there's a man who won a won a Nobel Prize for Literature who wrote this song for us, and we're going to sing it for you now. At first, I, <laughs> it didn't register for me, but then I'm like, well, then it's obvious who that is, you moron. But you know, for whatever reason, it, that didn't come through for me until they started. I actually seen them do that in Miami on the Bridges to Babylon tour in 1997, and then Keith came out with "You Got the Silver." Mm-hmm. Uh, which is cool. I hadn't seen yeah. him do that since. Yeah, that's a uh, deeper track for him. Yeah, it was it was Churchill Downs, but in two thousand six was the other time I'd seen that one. And then he did Happy, 
And I, I gotta say, if this is my last Stone show, that's a great that's a great last Keith song, right? I mean, sure. That that's that's kind of the big one. I I did all the I did look them all up, all the Keith songs that I've seen all the years. The Stones, I've seen them at those eight shows do seventy four different songs. Seventy four. Huh. Wow. Over the course well, that, of thirty three years. A- yeah, that's a testament to their catalog in general that they could have because I mean there aren't many bands that could switch out a, a show or a set list that ma- that completely because you know the, there are bands you've got to play X and the song the Stones really don't have to play any I mean they probably have to play Start Me Up they probably have to play like there are a couple that are in the mix but for the most part I mean everything's pretty much fair game yeah I was thinking about that because we saw Kiss together not so long after we both saw our first Stone show uh, mm-hmm. and then I saw right. Kids on this you know end of the road tour here and I've seen them about eight times about the same number of times as Stones there's no way I've seen them do 50 different songs let alone 74 right um, and, and the fact that we saw them on Revenge, I think, jacks up some of the song, jacks up that tone a little bit. I think from Reunion on, there are 40 songs for sure. There may not be 35 that I've seen them do, right? right? I think the Revenge throws it off. But the thing is, I mean, you know, you see them on Steel Wheels and they do mixed emotions and rock in a hard place and Harlem Shuffle and Undercover of the Night. And then they never do those again, you know. Or like we saw them on Voodoo Lounge together. And then I saw them again in Gainesville. And a lot of songs from that tour, Not Fade Away, Shattered, Sparks Will Fly, Beast of Burden, Heartbreaker, Love is Strong, It's All Over Now, I Go Wild, The Worst, Monkey Man. They only played those on those, you know, on that tour as far as, you know, in our lifetime. Or, you know, they they rarely played some of that other stuff. Plus, I got to see him at the Aragon Ballroom, which was... On that Licks tour where they did Stadium Arena Club or theater. Yeah. And they went deep with some of those that I'd never seen any place well, that, else. That was, yeah, and I thought that was a cool idea because that that's what that was for. You know, mm-hmm. you had the you had the giant stadium tour for the the stadium rockers. But yeah, if you were going to the smaller shows, it was because you wanted to see the deeper cuts. You were and more exactly. of a fan. I mean, I would say yes, you were more of a fan if you were watching the smaller shows. Yeah, and, and that small show, Aragon, that's the only time of the eight that I that they did not play Satisfaction, uh, okay. that they did not play Miss You, and that they did not play Sympathy for the Devil. I've seen those songs seven times, okay? The Aragon show is when I didn't see those three songs. But Tumbling Dice, all eight times. Honky Tonk Women, all eight times. Start me up all eight times and jumping jack flash all eight times. But this is a interesting point here. You know, one of the four or five songs they always had to play every single night was Brown Sugar. And Brown Sugar yeah. has been canceled, basically. Correct. Yes. Um, because you're talking about whipping women at night and slave times and things like that. So it's interesting. I've seen that one six times. Mm-hmm. All but the two from this week, right? <laughs> because they always had to, had to play Brown Sugar. Yeah. Uh, but they're not allowed to anymore. Also, It's Only Rock and Roll was a pretty big staple until just recently, apparently. Because I mm. saw it on the first, five of the first six shows that I saw, they played that. I guess they didn't play it in Miami. But uh, I don't know, just kind of interesting. 74 total songs. Some of them eight so- times, some of them seven times. See, like, now I'm now I'm starting to my my mind is starting to turn. How do they do that? Like, is it just Mick and Keith? Is it Mick Keith and Ronnie? Like, how do they come up with this? Swapping things in, swapping things out. I, I mean, is there a logistical deal about how I mean there isn't really anything that you know, like you don't have to bring a piano in or anything like that. But other than that, it has to be like, you know, how does this how does the show flow? Do you need to talk to the the tech guys or anything? And it just it would be interesting to see how they come up with the the changes in the set list. Yeah, I mean, and they've been doing this for a while, obviously. Yeah, I mean, I think there's some that they have to play. And obviously, we know what those are, you know, with Satisfaction and Jumpin' Jack Flash and Sympathy for the Devil, Miss You, Start Me Up. Yeah, Start Me Up's eight, Jumpin' Jack Flash, eight, Honky Tonk, eight, 
Tom would die, say. Yep. So, no, yeah, and it, they, they also want to break stuff back out. They all go back to the catalog once in a while just to, to say, and they, I think everyone gets, I mean, I think Bernard has some say in that. It's like, you guys should really do Worried About You. You know, he really kind of pulled this stuff over. When was the last time we did such and such or what? Like, Angie was the tour debut. You Got Me Rocking was the tour debut. I don't love that one, but that's from the Voodoo Lounge era. Yeah. You know, and, and obviously Keith... Keith, man. Let's see. I listed the Keiths here. Made them easy to get to. So Slipping Away, I've seen twice. Connection once last week. So glad that I did. Uh, you got the Silver twice. Happy four times. Little TNA once. All About You once. I Want to Hold You once. And then Before They Make Me Run twice. The Worst twice. And that's, that's, that's a pretty nice... I mean, that's, yeah. that's, that's pretty much all the ones I think he ever does. I don't think he's ever done through and through. Uh, well, maybe he has. I don't know. But even still, that's a nice mix-up, too. It's not like he has one song that he sings. Right, right. Like, he, right. Could probably do, he could probably do Happy every single time, and everybody would be, would be excited about it, but it's cool that he brings that one back. And especially Connection, because that, I mean, that's a wino song. I mean, don't give me, okay, yes, exactly. I understand. It was originally recorded by the Stones, no, but I guarantee song. you most people had not heard that until they he broke that out at the Palladium. M- most people are of our generation, yeah. I mean, if you're older, like in, our, in your 70s now, and you like the Stones forever, yeah, maybe you did know Connection. I had the Between the Buttons record, okay. the LP. I basically swiped it out of my dad's collection. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, and I didn't know that song, and I heard the record, you know, and yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't know the song, <laughs> you know, because uh, it is different, like you say, you know, like we said last yeah. week on last week's show, it, it's it's different. Yeah, you, so. yeah, you you listen to it, and you just say, uh, okay, I guess. I mean, I, I yeah, I, that, that would have been just a total throwaway track. Yeah, you know, but no, seeing Angie live was great, and and to think that you know, yeah. I, I got to see several songs the last two weeks that I'd never seen the Stones do live before. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's, I mean, there's like five. I I was in the 60s as far as the number of songs I'd heard them do live until until I decided to go to these two shows. So, look, Mick sounded great. The sound Mm -hmm. wasn't great where I was. It's just they didn't have the mix right. They weren't pointing it at us. I think if you were out in the crowd or your center, you were probably fine like we were last time. Because eventually at the end of the show... They're doing Give Me Shelter again up front instead of during the encore. Uh, so I'm like, this is great. I'm going to listen to this, and then I'm going to split. And so then I start walking back, and it starts sounding better and better because finally I'm in, like, in the way of the speakers. You know, I'm like, oh, well, yeah, I should have stayed back here all day because it sounds so much better. But, uh, but no, you know, it, it, was, it was great to hear that one again. I guess I've seen that one about half the times I've gone. Uh, but, you know, look – Again, I said I wasn't going to go see the Stones anymore because it's too mm-hmm. expensive and I'm not going to chase them. Well, suddenly I have a weekend. I don't have to take the wife and kid. You know, that cuts the price quite a bit. You know, I didn't eat or drink anything there, so that cuts the price. We took cabs last time. I took the bus this time. So, And they're in my town, you know. So as long as someone's in town, I will go. When I go by myself, I can do it in an inexpensive and efficient way. And just because I saw the Stones the week before, I was psyched to see them again because I knew they were going to do some things differently. And then I could have a different experience just because I wasn't with the child and could could see different things, could, could do whatever I wanted to, really. Right. Uh, there's some advantages to going to shows by yourself at this age. And you were, you were floating that idea. Well, you know, maybe. He's gonna go. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm like, come on. It's, you're all by yourself. You have no reason not to. Yeah. You, like you said, you could you can get there. It's in town. You can get there a couple of different ways. Yeah, there's no reason why you wouldn't go. I think I'm gonna go. Uh, that's what I thought you said. So I'm glad you did because I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear the compare and contrast one to the other, just to see what it was gonna be like. And I'm glad that they. I'm glad that they gave you basically a a whole new show to go to and that you got to experience that again. It was great, man. It was great. Yeah, it, it was fun. And I was chilling at some point. I'm like, am I really going to stay for the last, you know, seven songs, which I know exactly what they're going to play. And I've seen them play them yeah. you know, eight times at this point, you know, it's like, no, just, just relax, you know, 
Take it mm-hmm. easy. You don't have to get up tomorrow. You don't have anybody to worry about right now. You're just on your own. It's a beautiful night. You know, you're comfortable. You're not getting squished. You're hearing the Rolling Stones play live. Would you really want to be anywhere else? I mean, your, your, your bed will be there, right? The fridge will be there <laughs> at the end of the night, you know. I mean, I basically left during Jumpin' Jack Fly. I basically left about the same time as I did last time. A little okay. bit early uh, because I'd seen it, you know. And then, yeah, I just I walked across the street and the bus was right there. And I just whoop, hopped right on. And it takes me just a few blocks away from my house. So, yeah, it's chill. It was, it was a very chill evening, although I did see, you know, some interesting things in the crowd. I did see <laughs> security go off on a couple of guys. Oh, jeez. But they, they probably deserved it. Yeah, um, unfortunately. But it was cool. I had a couple of nice older women uh, in front of me uh, were kind of – they just kind of took up the space right in front of me, dancing by the food stand that we were adjacent to, and mm. I could see over them. So I kind of, you know, stood behind them. And beautiful sunny day, underneath a tree, listening to Stones in Hyde Park. I was like, "See, just enjoy it, man. Don't worry about the getaway. <laughs> you don't have anyone to take care of. You know how to walk right. out of here. You know you're going to well, get. It, you, you can walk home. So don't worry that, about that's it. What I, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Worst case, worst case, you could have walked home. So yeah, yeah not not a big deal. Yeah, no. I was walking down there, and it just so happens a bus stopped right in front of me. So I'm like, oh, is that the right bus? Perfect. Okay, well, I'll just jump on it, you know? <laughs> save me some steps, save me some time. I get down there a little earlier, so yeah. Hi, I'm Paul Stevenson from Vintage Rock Pod, and you're listening to The Ugly American Werewolf in London. It was it was a fun night out, but obviously I'd done that before. Mm-hmm. You, young man, had not been to a stadium show in America in how long? Oh, I mean, probably the last time I went, I was thinking about that on the way in. I think it was the stones when we saw them in 94. Uh, That's the last time out, you went to a stadium show. Yeah. An outdoor stadium show. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, like, like I've seen, I saw kiss a couple of times, but that was in, that, that was like Madison square garden. And then I saw them in Jacksonville at the, at the arena, not mm-hmm. outside. So yeah, it, that's probably the last out. Well, I, mean, I guess too, amphitheaters. Have you, have you seen you too? Uh, no, I have not seen you too. Okay. No, and and amphitheaters, even though they're outside, don't really count. That's not so that. Same. Yeah, no this this was the first thing since '94 that I'd been to an outdoor show, and okay, so we go, we get down there, and beautiful Jacksonville, Florida. It mm-hmm. is if I was on the center of the sun. It would have been a a nice little uh, getaway because it yeah. was so freaking hot when we got down there. And and I was thinking about what you were saying about how you because I was with my son and he was the same way. He's like, well, you know, where, where are we going to park? Where are we? Gonna? I'm like, just relax. Yeah. I got all of this. I've done this well, I, I mean, yeah, I've done this before. I can't tell you exactly. I'm just going to kind of get down there and then just kind of make a plan. So we found a place to park that was that was at the fairgrounds. I don't know if you've ever been there before, but it's yeah. real close to the. Yeah, that's good. It's real easy walking distance. We got out. We we walked to there was a there was a brewery down there uh, that also served food. So we sat there and ate and just chilled. Cool. Walked over to the stadium, and I know we don't like to get into politics here, mm-hmm. one way or the other. But I saw why America is the greatest place on the face of the earth. Oh yeah, there were a lot of people gathered just waiting to get in the gates hadn't opened yet. So I'm standing like kind of off to the side in the shade. Cause it was hot. Sure. And this dude comes around. Actually, there was more than one. There's like two or three guys, giant linebacker looking dudes with German shepherds oh. and, and yeah, looking for, you know, just c- coming up to see if you've got anything on you just oh. walking around. Yeah. Interesting. And so yeah, my son's like, he's like, what are they? I'm like, they're looking for drugs, dude. They're looking right. for drugs. So we get in there everybody's smoking marijuana. So right. obviously the attraction for, I don't care if the drug dogs are here. I'm still going to find a way to get this into the show to enjoy it. God bless America. That's America. I don't mean, I don't know what they, I didn't see anybody get busted. I don't know what they would have done, whether they would have you know taken your ticket away or arrested you. I don't know. I really don't know. Mm-hmm. Or if they would have just said, just throw it out and, you know, have a nice day. But the concept is you made that plan and you stuck to it by God. <laughs> you were going to, you were going to do this. So yeah, yeah it's yeah. just, it's, uh, it's, there's amazing. a lot of pot at the, at the stone show that that's, Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> Uh, and they weren't really searching anybody for that. They're pretty laissez-faire about that. Uh, weapons metal, yes, but pot, 
nah, come on in. Yeah. So we get in there and, you know, we kind of just, again, I'm just, we were there early. So we're, you know, we're getting the lay of the land. We kind of go around, we find our seats. We were kind of in the, we weren't in the upper deck. We were like in the second deck, but kind mm-hmm. of in the end zone. So we had a, almost a straight shot back to the stage. So that was, I was pleasantly surprised as the, as to the, the angle that we got, because there were better seats down lower, okay. but then you were kind of like, you kind of have to like, look all the way to one side or the other to see the stage. And it was, it would be a side shot. So we had it, we were straight in and I didn't think there was going to be an opening act, but there was, and it was called, they were called classless act out oh, of yeah. Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. They were pretty good. I, w- I was, I would definitely check them out. I'm going to listen, you know, find them on Spotify or whatever. They, they were great. They had great energy. They were, I mean, they sounded like, uh, you know, they were kind of playing themselves up like scumbags from, from <laughs> Los Angeles. So I was all, I was all for that. That was fantastic. Cool. So they did, they did that. Then it started to rain a little bit and then it started to rain a lot. And we, I, I kind of already planned for that. Like I had a raincoat and everything. So I'm like, whatever's going to happen is going to happen right until the lightning came down. And I said, Uh-oh. no, now we're out of here. Right. So, so we go into like the, you know, the Budweiser, you know, end zone, you know, tailgate place where you can kind of, they have those big garage doors that they can open and you right. go in there. So we were in there. And then, and then as soon as we got in there, big sign came up, everybody out, you know, it's inclement weather. So everybody's in the middle there. And so, you know, my son's like, well, well what's going to happen? I'm like, I don't know. Just relax. You know, we'll get a soda or whatever. We'll just stand here and wait. It's pouring rain. Just <sighs> torrential rain fun so then the then we stood there for probably about a half an hour and then the sign came up oh, all clear okay, time to go back to your seat okay except it was still pouring rain so i'm like <laughs> eh, i think we actually may want to we may want to stay here for a minute so joan jet comes on it's still pretty the rain's still pretty bad yeah. she was amazing she sounded great she was a trooper because the stage was it had a cover uh-huh. but it had to be probably two stories up. I mean, it was a big stage. So she's just getting wet. Everybody's getting wet, but she sounded great. She didn't complain. She, you know, she, she played all the hits, you know, she played, uh, you know, uh, bad reputation. She played, uh, crimson Uh, and clover. Uh, I, of course I will, you know, uh, I love rock and roll. It was great. And, and the crowd was really into it too, which I was, I was excited about because, you know, I mean, let's face it, there's a lot going on that night. She was the first, real band to go mm-hmm. on but no the crowd was really into it there were people standing in the rain i was not one of them but i kind of got right up there so i wasn't outside but wasn't mm-hmm. you know really inside either yeah she sounded great and has and she move around pretty well i mean she looked good yeah absolutely i mean i think i think at that point in time they were kind of terrified about being you know f- slipping and falling number one and i don't know possibly being electrocuted in the rain yeah i don't know i don't know how many amps you're pulling out of all your wireless stuff but no i mean it, like i said there wasn't any complaining there wasn't anything like i'm not doing this so it, it sounded good and they were you know they were they looked like they were really into it too the the stage was there wasn't really anything to the stage. It okay. was all the it was all the um, screens in the back, which were okay. kind of cool, which helped out during the night because it made for a much easier cleanup. You know, one person out, the other person in. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Because yeah. even because even I mean the first the classless act people they played at the front. I mean, sure. okay. Yeah. But everybody else they took everything else away. You know, drum riser and everything else. Really. So yeah, so it was really like you were watching watching different shows. Oh, that's cool. I bet gives yeah. good respect to, to Joan and Poison. And it's like, look, you get the same stage we do. It's just correct. You know, move your equipment around yeah, because yeah. I read I read online. It's like Joni was delayed and she only played thirty minutes. I guess she plays more like forty five or something like that on most nights. Yeah, you know? and then the Poison was delayed. And Def Leppard maybe didn't even play as many songs as they would have. No because one of did. all these, yeah. yeah, everything, everything was, everything was cut short, but honestly, by that point in time, by the, as late as we were, I'm like, I'm kind of okay with this because right. we needed to get to getting, um, yeah, but she played and then it started raining again and we had to come back inside. So that delayed it, delayed it. Finally, it cleared up. And so we came back out and they were putting stuff together, you know, okay. Okay, blah, 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 stuff together. And it says, and, and the one thing I will tell you is they weren't real clear about what was happening like Mm. you know like there wasn't any kind of announcement or anything like that and then it was you know they they were playing music in between like welcome to the jungle and back in black and stuff like that sure that cuts out and they said ladies and gentlemen welcome to the stage poison i was like oh my goodness 
Goodness, like, it's actually down. here. Yeah. Because, I mean, a day and a half ago, Brett Michaels was in the hospital. Right. With COVID. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not a Poison fan. They didn't make me a fan of their music, but right. they made me a fan of just gutting it out. And Brett Michaels is a fantastic front man. Like he was yeah. working the crowd. He was, you know, he was very, you know, apologetic about being sick. And, you know, this is the only place I want to be and doing sure. the whole thing. They played a couple of songs and then it, it was still kind of rainy when, mm -hmm. when he was out there. He was going to, and you could see like he was, he had his, uh, he had a, something over the mic at one point in time. Like it was so wet that he didn't want, you know, oh, I sure. guess, interference. They're going to do every rose has its thorn, right? So he comes out with the, with the uh, acoustic. acoustic guitar and he just says, he, he audibly says, you know what? Screw this. He picks the thing up, the mic, and walks out to the middle of the stage because they had like a little runway. So now right. he's getting totally wet, but he's in with the crowd. I'm like, this dude knows how to, he yeah. knows how to perform. Absolutely. And they, yeah. And they sounded good. They look good. Everybody looked like they were happy to be there. I know that they've, in, you know, in the past, they've had problems, you know, with CC and he looked good. Bobby too. I mean, he's had a lot of alcohol problems. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I mean, there's, there's been problems between CC and, and the rest of the band, like he's yeah. out for a while and now back, everybody looked like they were having a good time. Everybody looked good. They sounded really good. So I was, I, I don't think that I would go and see a Poison concert, but they, they definitely delivered in, in the space that they were supposed to. Be. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm glad you said that because I, I am the first person to admit that I've never liked Poison. Mm -hmm. uh, I just thought they were cheesy. Correct. There were four redneck girls to like, and it worked, in my opinion. <laughs> you know, and, and you know, did you write on Skinny Bop? Yes, that's why I don't like, you know I mean? It's, <laughs> You get zero credit for that. I mean, you know, it's they're just kind of cheesy. And, and Ross Halfin said in the Poison behind the music, he's like, girls like them. I never met a guy who said he liked Poison. If he did, they were sad. And that's kind of the way I'd always felt about them. But Brett Michaels is a legit front man, not just right. a singer, but someone who knows what being a rock and roll front man is all about. And he goes out there and delivers it to the people and he may be completely bald underneath that bandana. He's got some Swedish girl's hair on top of his head and the bandana Correct. keeps it all together. Okay. Yes. That's fine. I give him a lot of credit. He deserves respect as mm -hmm. a front man, as someone who leads a band who could do a stadium tour. Here's the thing you say Motley Crue and Def Leppard. Yeah. They've got the songs for him. Like it, but you know, poison can deliver a show. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, it, and I, you know, I mean, CC sounded great. I mean, I, he's not my favorite guitar player, but I mean, he was out there, you know, doing his thing. He had a little bit of a solo. I mean, like you said, everything was cut short. So I don't know if he, I don't know if he had a longer deal, mm -hmm. um, but they did make a big deal about saying, you know, you, we, you have to give Brett a giant round of applause. He gutted this thing out. He, he would, you know, they had to, I think it was Charlotte maybe or Nashville that they had to just, they had to pass on because he was too sick. I didn't mm -hmm. think there was any way they were playing. And actually I was, I was texting with my wife. She's like, well, what are they going to do? I'm like, I guess they'll just go three and, you know, shorten the thing up or maybe, and uh, nope, they were there. They were there. Yeah. That's interesting. That's, and, and so good for him. I mean, you know, good, absolutely good, good for them. Yeah. And I know a lot of people wanted to just see poison. I saw somebody who was upset about the fact that he'd gone from Kansas city to Nashville basically to see poison wow. and then they didn't you know they didn't play uh and and so you know I, he i know brett's the kind of professional that hates to not deliver mm -hmm. and of course he wants to do the gig of course right um, so it probably killed him to not be able to do that but then to come down and do it in jacksonville you know he's got a ton of fans down there there were there were a lot more people wearing poison shirts there than i would have thought oh wow, yeah they yeah there was a good contingent of people to see that band at this absolutely show. oh yeah yeah, but yeah. it is North Florida, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, they are very... I lived there for 10 years off and on. And <laughs> they're very popular down there. There's no doubt about that. Correct. Hey, jumping away, though, because you think, well, can you get someone to fill in for Brett for the night? It's like, no, you know, they just have... The poison just can't play. But I guess Sasha Allen, who's the backup singer of the Rolling Stones... When mm -hmm. they played, maybe it was Milan or something like that. For whatever reason, she couldn't go. I don't know if she had COVID or, or she, she just couldn't play for whatever reason. 
So they got the young woman who's playing Tina Turner, like on in London, like on the stage, and like okay. the, what's love got to do with it musical? Like she's playing Tina Turner. They got her, and I, I'm sorry, her name's escaping me right now, of course. But they got her to fill in for Sasha at the last minute, so she jetted over there. Now she ended up getting fired for doing that. Oh. Now, but the thing is, she and, and she said she sent the text out of the message. You know, she got the email about her being fired or whatever. But we don't know what happened. Yes, she has an understudy. So if she can't go, there is someone to do the show that night. Right. Which is different. You know, it's different like Broadway like that than it is for if Mick can't go, the Stones will play. Right. Mm -hmm. But if if she can't be Tina Turner tonight and what's love got to do with it, her understudy could do it. And she could go. I don't know if she asked permission. And then they said, no, you can't go. And she did it anyway. I don't know if she just went and said, eh, eh, I'm sick. I can't come in tonight. Eh, eh. You know, and hoping they just wouldn't find out that she played to 60,000 people in Milan or whatever. I don't know what happened there. But the bottom line is she had three or four nights left in this run. And they basically said, you're, you're out. But that's, uh, I still think she made the right call, honestly. Because it's yeah. either she did 100 and 27 nights as Tina Turner or 131. And it's 127 plus I played with the Rolling Stones. That's yeah, pretty think, easy, right? I think you would have, if she hadn't, I think she would have kicked herself later. Like, man, I really should have done that. Yeah. So yeah, good for her. And and that stinks that they fired her because that's a cheesy thing to do, but good for her for doing it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so then they, did it rain again before Motley? I mean, what was going on? Okay, that's so three songs from their normal list is what it said. No, they so basically it rained a little bit with poison, but then it then it once it that passed, it actually turned into a really nice night. Okay. And so they're taking the things down, but here's the only bad part. They're taking the stuff down and they're putting up something else. I don't know who's gonna be next. Is it Def Leopard? Is it Motley Crue? Right, because they like switch that out every night. There's right? no there's no notification or anything. So I'm thinking to myself, it's like nine o'clock now. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that I had said in the earlier, I thought this was last week or whatever, or last time we talked, you know, well, I really want Def Leppard to close, you know, to see the fulls. And you said, nah, you'd probably be better off Def Leppard playing first, Motley Crue playing last. That way you could, well, me and my big fat mouth. I'm thinking, <laughs> man, I really, I really hope this is Def Leppard that way. Cause he's starting to fade fast. It's already nine o'clock. Right. You know, there's nothing's going on. They're just setting it up. And all of a sudden I hear this, I hear this guitar swell, you know, like somebody's practicing, but I'm like, Oh shoot. That's, that's, Molly that's, that's, that's Molly Crew. That's yeah. not Def Leppard. And then they go into, they go into it. And I'm like, Oh, we are going to be here all night long. But Motley Crew was fantastic. Were they? they were so loud and uh, Tommy played the entire set. I don't know whether the drum set like stole money from him or a girl or something, but he beat those things yeah. to death. Like, and I was, I was telling, cause my son is a drummer and I was saying, uh, you'd like to sit and sit at that kit one time, right in front of these people. He was like, yeah, that would be pretty cool. Yeah. It was so, it was just so percussive the way he plays. Like he's like, it's almost like he's using baseball bats instead of sticks Holy crap. He is and a violent drummer, man. He, just, he's actually really, really good. Just doesn't take a break. And it's just, it was just disgusting the way that he played. He played the whole set. He didn't have a solo. I don't know whether that was because of the, the weather or because he's still healing from the four broken ribs. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, he didn't take a break. He didn't do anything. He came out and addressed the crowd. Mick sounded great. His guitars look like they're dragged behind the tour bus. Right. I mean, every single one of them is just, it just looks like they're beat to death. They're all, you know, the paint's all off of them and everything. So I don't know whether that's, whether he did that on purpose or he just plays these things to death. He sounded great. Probably one of the most underrated guitarists in the hard rock, heavy metal land. Just, I mean, he's just spot on. Didn't say a word the whole night. Looks like he can barely walk. Like, yeah. But, he can still play. I mean, he was out there just doing it the entire time. He looks set. like death warmed over, man. I that mean, his correct. skin is pale. He can't really move. Right. He can still play. And he mm. wrote all those guitar bits, right? So, right. Uh, uh, and, and he's a fairly smart guy. He's just kind of a weirdo. Right. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, he's the one that I'm like, because it's like Tommy Lee is 59. I'm like, Tommy Lee's 59 and Mick Mars is like 87, man. Like <laughs> yeah, he's a lot. Yeah. He's a lot older than the rest of them. Tommy's the youngest, but Mick is definitely the oldest. I mean, he could, yeah. he could be 10 years older. Oh I yeah. He's go gotta back. be about 70. Yeah. Be. 
Yeah. And then he's got health problems. That's one thing. And then I'm sure there's a whole bunch of other things he did to himself that uh, were not kind to his body, but he sounded good. Vince, he was not 1984 Vince, but he looked a lot healthier than he has in recent years. I've heard he lost a little bit of weight, but what did his voice sound like? His voice, it, it sounded better than I thought it was going to, because I've seen performances where he doesn't even like really speak. Like you're like, I guess those are the lyrics to the song. Like I know, you know, I know home sweet home, but like I don't know what he's singing. He sounded he sounded pretty he sounded better than my better than what I was expecting. Okay. I got you. Because that's a I mean, once again, Mick knocked it out, man. And and sometimes I couldn't even hear Keith's guitar very much. You know, I couldn't hear the horns sometimes all that well. But Mick always, they always had him turned up. He was always mm-hmm. right in the mix and he always sounded great uh, and, and still doing his moves. I'm like, Jackson is seeing something very different on the other side. <laughs> you know, now, I mean, we'll, and we'll get to Joe Elliott in a minute, but I mean, mm-hmm. like, Vince is past his prime. And look, listen, who in the world would have bet that in 2022, all four original members of Motley Crue were still alive? That's crazy. No one. No one. Yeah. For, it's for unbelievable. Of, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Damage that they did to themselves. Though, I mean, yeah. Jesus. Although it was funny because I, as we were in the rain ways, I was checking Twitter, you know, just something to do. And Nikki posted something about how he was, he's been sober for like 2000 days or something like that. Some big milestone. I'm like, yeah, who would have thought I can imagine that the backstage now is, pretty different than it used to be back in the day. Like, Oh, look, is that a tray of cocaine? Well, okay, cool. Let's do this. And now it's all probably like, you know, fruit plates and Fiji water. No, I I rewatched the dirt last night just to get Uh ready for the show, you know, and they cleaned up once before. And then they go out on tour and they'll be sitting on a strip club and Oh yeah, bring me a bottle of water. I'm like, what the, how long is that going to last? man? That, <laughs> that's not going to work with Motley Crue forever. As much as you all want to be sober and you did good shows, it's like, it's no fun. You know, you're a rock and roll band. So, uh, all right. Well, what was your favorite song of the cruise? Oh, f- favorite song was, it, it, it had to be kickstart my heart because I yeah. just love, I love the beginning part of that. And you know, what's coming next with the drums and it's just, it, they just blew it out of the park with that one. It was the last song that they played. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, honestly, like I really liked that song. The one they played before primal scream that yeah. was on the, uh, I think it was a greatest hits. Greatest hits album, and yeah. does a little, he does a little slide on that. That was really good too. But, but kickstart, you know, cause he played a little bit, he had a little bit of an intro before just going into that the riff. So that was really good. Uh, like I said, Tommy hit him super hard on that one, especially. And even with like, I was wearing earplugs and even it was still loud during that. I'm like, I, you could feel it like in your chest, just like somebody was punching you. Yeah. That's and awesome. Anybody that, anybody that says that Nikki doesn't play the bass, that was, that was pumping too. The drum and the bass were just massive. But the other thing was they had um, three young ladies on oh, backup singers, yeah. Let me put it this way: If I found out they weren't actually singing, that wouldn't have that would not have surprised <laughs> me. But but what did surprise me was that they were out there for pretty much every song, and they had a different outfit on for every song. Oh, okay. The amount of work that must have been for them to like literally sprint backstage, change, and then come right back out again. They were those three ladies were they were working it. They were working. I mean, the the band had a like maybe one outfit change, and that could have been because of the rain. Right. But I mean, and the other thing too is. To be out there when it's wet in you know seven inch stiletto heels, that has to be a little harrowing too. Because even even Joe Elliott said at one point he's like, I think I'm going to break my neck out here. It's so wet. Right. <laughs> well, how was my favorite all time cruise song? Is looks to looks to kill. How, how was that? That was good. Yeah, I think that was where was that? That was number five after Live Wire, which I love. Yeah, that was good. Um, they did the dirt from the from the uh the soundtrack that was a little that was a little weird because they were they had a um raffle for the shriners or something and they were you know like you know they were talking about like you know you could buy the uh cds you know you could buy diamond star halos or you could buy the soundtrack to the dirt i'm like kind of sounds like they put that one in there like we need to have an album uh (laughs) right so and but we'll talk about that in a minute but yeah start to finish it was good they had a ton of energy i can i was a little bit worried because at that point in time the show was kind of a little bit off the rails as far as being late and weather delays and i don't know how many people must 
it didn't seem like it, but I don't know where they were, but maybe some people left because of the rain. So I think that even though it didn't go a hundred percent their way, they were still excited to be there. And they seemed like they really, they really did well. And the screens in the back were cool because it, it almost looked like at some points it was 3d, like they had these, you know, 30 foot, like blow up doll women, mm-hmm. but it wasn't real. I mean, it was just a projection. I'm like, wow, that's really cool. The amount of stuff that they can do with yeah. the video these days it without really having to, without having to haul thousands of pounds worth of stuff around because really all four bands used about the same space. Yeah. And then they can have their own graphics up there and, you know, correct. They, uh, and obviously some bands may put more into it than others or may have more animation or video or whatever, but yeah, you can, you can do all sorts of stuff and they can share that screen. So it's just about plugging right. it in. So, and, that, and that, they shared, cool. yeah. And they shared all the, the lighting rigs and the lasers and everything else. They didn't change any of that. Now. I mean, I, I Joan Jett didn't use any lasers, but that was because the sun was still out, but I mean, still it was, it wasn't like that. Cause somebody told me, I can't remember who it was. Somebody told me they saw guns and roses and Metallica Mm-hmm. Uh, on that thing they said it was like almost two hours in between between one yeah. and the other because they had to take everything off and then set the other one up i'm like oh plus axel would have been doing something to be a little bitch and fuck everything up well they they had to at well okay so you had that and right. then when they did don't cry i think they had to bring in the piano so they had to move things out of the way and wheel in the grand and it's like oh can we just get this going please <laughs> And I can't, I can't imagine after seeing Metallica going through an entire Metallica show, waiting two hours, I would think like, I just need to take a nap or go Yeah, because they would play for like three hours, right? right. So, so yeah, I mean, you get there at six for three hours of Metallica. Okay, well, now it's 11 o'clock and Guns N' Roses is just going on. I, that, well, I couldn't have even done that back then, dude. No, that that, that Metallica show we saw in South Florida where they played for about three and a half hours. When we were, I was like 19, I was in great shape. I was exhausted. I felt yeah. like I'd been in a fight or something like that. I couldn't have done Guns N' Roses also. I couldn't have done Guns N' Roses the next week. I remember, yeah, going back to the car, just like, can we just rest in the parking lot? Yeah. Really? <laughs> I'm not going to make the car. It's a fight, man. <laughs> really was. Okay, so the, so the crew gets over. So now I know what's going to happen after this. So now it's like, you know, 10 o'clock yeah. or, you know, past 10 o'clock. I'm like, wow. He, I'm like, I kept asking myself, I'm like, you okay? Cause we, he's, he really wanted to see Def Leppard. So I knew, I kind of thought he maybe had an extra gear that he could go into for this. And he's like, no, yeah. no, I'm good. I, we can say, I'm like, okay, cool. But after this, you knew what was going to happen. You knew Def Leppard was coming next. They did a really cool thing. They, so they had in the back of the stage, there were like three giant, screens but then on either side there were two there was a screen on each side of sure the okay okay so they go into they they project the diamond star halos the the co- cover. album cover mm-hmm. and then they give you a countdown like that's fantastic you know exactly what's going to happen you know how much time you have to get ready i think it was like a they when it was 20 minutes they gave you that countdown okay and it, you know you know three two one and then boom they were on and they, again, it was late. They started with Take What You Want from the new album, yeah. which sounded really, really good. I, you know, this, this thing started, what, two years ago or maybe before that, this tour, uh, and then it got they, postponed? Yeah, when they were supposed to do it. Yeah, that's right. So had this happened when it was supposed to, they wouldn't have had these new, re- these new tunes. They, it sounded great. They were excited to play it. The crowd was excited to hear it. I don't think that he didn't say anything to begin with. They just went into it. But they, but they, it had been around enough where everybody knew what it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the Diamond Star Halos have been getting great reviews. You know, obviously yeah. we've got some friends like Chris from Rock These Tweets or My Rock and Roll Heaven and Neil from Def Lep Pod. They've right. been all over it. But, you know, you, and it sounds good. I mean, I've given it a listen. Uh, and, um, you know, you always want to say, does it fit in good with the old stuff? Absolutely. And, and it was a cool way to start off the show. Um, because it, it, it just showed me that they're very excited about this record. They, they feel like, I think it was something that they didn't even think about doing. Mm-hmm. It was just, they were sitting around like, well, we got to do something, you know, anybody got an idea for a song. And then from that, the album comes out. Which is cool. You know, and they look, Def Leppard may not have achieved the huge success that they had in the eighties mm-hmm. since then, but they've continued on. And, and again, back to VH1 behind the music. I remember the Def Leppard one. He's like, look, we got to start looking at the Stones and Aerosmith because those guys are in their 50s. 
we're still only in our 30s. That was 25 years ago, right? So right. like, we can't just say, we'll go out and play the old songs. And look, the other three bands that came before them, were any of them playing songs off their new album? Mm. No. No. You know, and so that shows you the kind of class they're in. Look, to me, Def Leppard, I know Motley Crue's huge. And, mm -hmm. and it's the United States of America. And they've got a ton of songs. They could headline this tour, certainly. But to me... It's it's quite clearly Def Leppard to be the headlining act. I, I would agree. And even though it was very late and we stayed till the bitter end, I'm glad that they closed the show because they they did have it just it really felt like they made that show their own when they came to the stage. Like it was like, yeah, we've been waiting to see this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I I was super excited. They were super pumped up, even though it was late, and and they they just brought it. And it was that's the second time you've seen Def Leppard, right? That the first time was that with me. That is correct. Uh, yeah. A mere 30 years ago. 30 years <laughs> later. <laughs> we nice. were 19 and now we're 49. <sighs> Where did the time go? But, you know, it, it was cool. To, well, it was sad to think about that, but it was cool to think like, and now I got my kid here and he's, he's excited to see, like, that's what he was excited to see. And it was like, you know, yeah, I told him, I, you know, I saw this 30 years ago and he's like, wow, you were really old. I'm like, Will you <laughs> shut up or you're walking home. No, I've got the I'm car key. super cool right. because I saw it 30 years ago. Let's play a game. Who can drive me or you? That's what I thought. <laughs> now you get, now you tell me how cool I am. Yeah. We're going to go to the waffle house. Who can pay for the meal? Yeah, I'm gonna have some bacon and waffles. You can enjoy your water. Correct. <laughs> Free refills. <laughs> Although it was yeah. funny because in the when we were walking out to the parking lot, he was he was cooked, and some yeah. I heard somebody say something about Waffle House, and I was like, oh man, That's no, I can't do it. Yeah, <laughs> it's not really good right now. You gotta get home. Yeah. Yeah. So then they go they go into fired up from there. That's another new one. Good. So that's and, confidence and so, coming yeah. out with two new songs. Yeah, absolutely. And and the crowd was into it. They were like, oh, you know, what's this? Play the hits. No, everybody was super pumped up. You know, everybody was standing. My seat was a little bit at first. I was like, because eh, it was kind of a, against a concrete wall, uh -huh. uh, you know, where, where you would go up and down. And I was like, oh, but then I'm like, wait a minute. I can stand up and lean on this thing. Oh, wait a minute. Now this is this is I got a little more space here. Yeah, So that was nice. Yeah, I stood up for pretty much the whole thing. Um, and so did everybody else, which I was, especially being that late at night mm -hmm. and the crowd was, it was older, but there was a lot of people there with like smaller, not little kids, but like, you could tell they were families. I'm like, okay, sure, this, yeah, yeah. this is pretty cool at this point in time that I'm one of them. And there were a lot of trashy looking people there too. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. rock and roll will never die in the, in the United States. That's Thank right. You. you know, it's the next generation. I mean, how big was the crowd was the place full was the upper deck only half done or the the upper deck there weren't a whole lot of people in the upper deck okay, i will okay. tell you that the the, yeah. the floor was pretty full where we were, were was pretty full um but again i don't know how many people bagged it because of the weather because they were they were talking about like the weather was going to be pretty bad most of the day yeah and then by the time Def Leppard came on everybody was wet and it was late so i don't that that's why i'm like i don't really as far as ticket sales go i don't know what that translated to gotcha Gotcha. But the but the crowd was pumped up for 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 them even being that late, so I was excited. Okay, so after the first two songs, then they get into some of the classics, right? That is correct. Then we go into Animal, and then everybody who's I mean, it was it wasn't like they weren't psyched, but then they were like, okay, here we go now, and yeah. that sounded yeah. I mean that the the lick is unmistakable. They have the you know the uh, animal like the circus motif going on with the, uh, the with videos? the screens, oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, so it, it was cool and it's it sounded good, but you know one of the things that doing this show now I'm I'm, I'm like well okay so eh, what else can I what else can I see what else can I notice about this that we can talk about yeah if you watch the video screens and you saw Joe Elliott his head was always kind of behind the bass drum right okay so and the bass drum was elevated a little bit so I'm watching rick allen's feet or his legs i don't know how to play the drums but i know the basic mechanics and mm. that's not it so it was it was weird i'm like yeah he does he just does it a totally different way like if you close your eyes you're like okay i understand how he's playing and then you watch him and you're like that's not it at all well he has to hasn't he correct and i was thinking about you remember what's his name jeff healy oh yeah same thing, it's, like you like who listen, plays the guitar like that, like, and, and then you watch me like, wait a minute, how is he even making it have that sound? You know, he would play it on his on his lap. Yeah, basically. Anybody who doesn't know, he was born without sight, so he had to teach himself. So he'd play it on his lap, and instead of wrapping his hand underneath, 
he put it on top and would kind of snake his fingers around, but, it, but listening to it, you'd never know. And that's the same thing with Rick Allen. Like you watch him play and you're like, he's, he's overcome this horrendous accident that we've talked about before, but just to, to put that all together, like, wow, that's, I could just watch him, the, the camera on him the whole night. Like that's fascinating that the way that you do this. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Cause I yeah. remember when we saw him together 30 years ago in the arena in, in Orlando, I think I was more captivated by the stage in general and the fact yes. that his thing, his thing moved back and forth right on the right. top uh, of the top level of that stage. And then it would go in the center and it would push him up even higher and kind of telescope yeah. him up. You know, I was more and I could see his feet moving, but I mean, I wasn't focused on that. There's just so much other stuff going on when they're in the round like that. But yeah, now at this age, you can really kind of technically examine yeah. what he's doing and be like, wow. Well, he's and, and the other thing. The other thing that I love too is just just the look when they would and not that everybody wasn't having a good time, but just the look on his face. He was just so excited just to be there. It's huge smile. I'm like, man, these guys love what they do. And I understand, okay, they make a lot of money. But the other thing I was thinking about too is we throw the term, especially here in the United States, rock star. Oh, that guy's a rock star. You know, you you made that sales proposal like a rock. Shut up. These people are rock stars. Death these guys are, are in rock their, stars. Yeah. They are in their 60s. I think uh, Phil Collins doesn't even own a shirt. He might have one <laughs> right. where he has to like, dude, you can't come in For here with funerals shirt. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right. I mean, the guys, I don't know. I mean, he's got to be in his mid sixties at this point in time. I mean, these guys, they spend a lot of time working on themselves to be able to do this still, to be able to play at that level. Mm -hmm. And just the, the, uh, the, well, and, and, you know, Vivian Campbell has had uh, ongoing battles with cancer and he still, he looks good. And, you know, all, all those guys are in great shape. They sound great. And the way that they play is just effortless. Like, it's not like I didn't even really hear. Uh, well, I don't want to say it was perfect, but there wasn't like a, whoa, you missed something there. I mean, they're just on point. And that's, that was all of the bands. That's awesome, dude. I mean, yeah. that's, that's, that's just great to hear because mm -hmm. look, the stones may not have been perfect. Certainly not the second night, but I think it was more of the sound wasn't perfect. But you're, yeah. you're not necessarily going for that, kind of going for an experience. But in the stadium tour like that, you know, it's like you, you get that many people in there, you want to get it right, right? You, Correct. You want to give them the, the best show possible. Yeah, the Def Loves, I mean, they've never really broken up. They had to kick Pete Willis out at some point. But since mm -hmm. then, you know, uh, they've been pretty tight and, and they never stopped. And and when you just, when it's the same guys and you keep doing it, you never stop. You've got it dialed in, you know. So okay, the the most junior member of the band, Vivian Campbell, Vivian, has been yeah. there thirty years. Right. So yeah. only thirty years. <laughs> only yeah. thirty years. So yeah, no, that's right. What? But, but I mean, I guess, and, and then they, you know, they did more. I mean, they did. Well, before that, so they go into Animal, and that's great off Hysteria, and then you know, then Joe he comes in, he starts to do a little crowd work. You know, thanks so much for being here. We love you. You know, Jacksonville, blah blah blah. We're gonna take you back now to a little record called pyromania i'm like oh here we go here we go <laughs> and they go into fooling and the what i liked about this was they didn't they did not have an acoustic guitar even though the beginning part and so phil kind of played it on the electric guitar so it sounded a little bit different mm -hmm. and and he did not joe didn't go up as high as he could anymore but it still sounded really good they made the adjustments so okay. and, and we've talked about this before i'd rather have you sing in a different key than not be able to hit the notes. So yeah, right. that was cool. And just to think about, man, when was the first time I heard Foolin? 1983, mm -hmm. 80, you know, whenever that was, and it still sounds great. Still, you know, it's still a song that you want to hear like, yeah, let's do this. Sweet, man. Yeah. That's awesome. And then back to, then they did Armageddon It, which was, you know, another big hit off Hysteria. That was great. I love then Armageddon It. Yeah, that that's a great, yeah, great thing. A great crowd, you know. Great sing chorus, it. sing along. Yeah, exactly. Then they go into Kick, another good one off the new record. It sounds, it it sounded like you know it fit right in there. Yeah, cra again, crowd was into it. It wasn't like you know. I know people. There are bands that complain about how well you know when we play the new stuff, people leave and they go and they get. Nobody left. Everybody wanted to hear it. That's been, I think that was the first, was that the first single off the, that they released? Uh, off the new record? Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so, I mean, people knew it. I knew it. It's, it's, it was, it was one people wanted to hear. They cheered for it. So I was excited about that. Then they go into Love Bites, which is not my favorite song, but the cool part about this was that in, in there's kind of like, there's kind of empty spaces in the song and Phil was kind of filling in. He was doing a little guitar fills 
Oh, okay. And some extra notes. It worked. It sounded good. I like that. This was another one where they tuned it down because they're not going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. No, That's no, hard no, to do. No, no, no. Yes, correct. Yeah. So again, I'm glad you did that. I don't want to hear him screeching through that. So that yeah. was good. That's their only number one hit. Really? Yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's a, that's a mystery to me, but okay, cool. But again, it's a, it's what I was thinking about what a, what just a giant record uh, hysteria was when, oh, when I gosh. think about that, you know, they would show, well, and the, and the thing is too late. Yeah, I was gonna, I'm going to backtrack here for a minute. When they were playing fooling, they were, they had showed like, yeah, they were pictures in the back and there were a couple of Steve Clark, you know, pictures right. from back then, you know, you kind of give it the, you know, we love you, man. Nope. Photos of Pete Willis, but that's fine. Uh, right. <laughs> so we don't love him. Sorry. Sorry, dude. And yeah. it's fooling. It's not fooling. It's right. fooling. <laughs> right. And apostrophe. Correct. Right. Yeah. So where were we? Then we get into after that is excitable uh, mm. off hysteria, which was, yeah, I mean, it was good. It was, it was a track. I didn't expect them to play. Yeah. So that was kind of a interesting surprise with the number of stuff. Uh, and then they go into rocket, you know, well, hold like, on before you get into yeah, that though, but sorry, see that's yes. where the rain did affect Def Leppard's show. Cause they okay. went in an hour late and usually between excitable and, and rocket they do like a semi-acoustic set okay yeah yeah yeah. yeah. they do they uh, at least some of the times i don't know if this is every night the the night before whatever they did this guitar yeah Uh, they did have you ever needed someone so bad and they did uh, two steps behind that said joe performing solo acoustic so it's like the other guys get a break and it's just joe with his guitar i guess they decided since it was so late and they'd already lost so much time let's just take the acoustic bit you know, right out of the show and we'll yeah, just and go I, straight to rocket. Cause I was, cause while we were waiting, I was looking at the, at the um, set list from the night before. And I wondered about that. And so when they took that out, it, it didn't really hurt my feelings because we were already late. And, right. you know, I think that would have at that point in time, I think that may have killed it. You know, bring, yeah, those oh, are slowdowns, right? Let's, let's bring, bring it down. down and, yeah. Okay, no, dude, it's like eleven thirty right now. We we don't need down. We gotta keep up. the train gotta, moving. We gotta, yeah. yeah, we gotta keep the energy up. So yeah, I was I was not. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't have hated that, but I think that would have that would have been a given the situation. Yeah, that would have been a bad idea. At yeah, that I think point you're right about that. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, we skipped that. We go to excitable and then rocket, which was, you know, it was cool to hear the intro, you know, that people talk about like, well, backing tracks or whatever. Okay. That has to be a backing track. Right. I mean, it's a you sample. can't do that it's live. Designed that way. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So after that, we kind of had a little bit of a, we kind of had a little bit of a hard time here because my son has complained on several times. He does not like bringing on the heartbreak. What? He, he thinks it's too whiny. I'm like, okay. So then they go into that. And I'm like, sorry, dude. <laughs> oh, whatever. I love it. This one of our favorites. So yeah. you can just go, you can just pout in the corner. Then I'm one of my very <laughs> favorites. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Bring it on the heartbreak, man. Right. Yeah. It still sounded good. That was, that was a deep track from, uh, from high and dry. So great that they're, they still can continue to, to keep that in the set list. Yeah. One of my very favorites. I even like the, uh, the one with the keyboards in it, the alternative yeah. version, uh, or the you know the single remix, whatever they want to call it. One of their very best from the early days. So then they go into Switch 625. And this was cool because it's mostly guitar solo. And that, not solo, but it's guitar. It's an instrumental. So it, the stage was like a, I guess it was Is like- Is that from On Through the Night? What's that from? That's a good question. That Yeah, that could be. You know what? I, that could be from On Through the Night. That is old, old, old. But- if you look down from the from out of high and dry, high and dry, yeah, the stage was like a T. So you had the you had the back part, and then you kind of had a runway. So at this point in time, both Phil and Vivian walk to the front of the T, like right out in front, and they're playing, and that sounded really good. And then the back end of that, they go into a a, a kind of a truncated Rick Allen solo, mm-hmm. and that was really cool. See, again, it's late. I don't have time for twenty minutes, but that part of it was it was it fit in really nicely with that. That's cool. Yeah. And and I'm I'm glad he still does a solo too. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Because Tommy didn't do any solo and and I was a little disappointed about that. I think that had to do, like I said, I think that had to do more with probably timing and health reasons. Mm -hmm. Cause I think when he does the solo, he's really going to go into it. So you might want to just take it easy, but yeah, he sounded great. And again, the look on his face, he was so just happy to just be there playing the drums. 
it was it was awesome to watch. That could have gone a little longer for me, but you know, again, we needed to wrap this thing up. Right, right. Um, and so then they go into hysteria after that. You know, Big crowd way. favorite. And again, when, at this point in time, I guess I don't know something had happened, and Phil, you know, just decided, okay, now it's time for no shirt. So he's walking around, and I'm telling you what he, I mean, he just looked. Like he, I mean, if you didn't know any better, you'd swear he was 30 years old. Uh, he's ripped. He looks. Yeah. Oh my, like, just like one of the, it's kind of one of those ripped where it's like, man, what am I doing with my life? I got to get to the gym or something. <laughs> I, I mean, this guy's got 20 plus years on me and he just looks like he's son of a gun it can be done people. <laughs> but this was, this was, uh, it was great because again, when they go into the solo at the end, the both Vivian and, and he were out on the end. The only thing that could have made it better is in the, in the round video where uh, Joe is playing the rhythm part and mm-hmm. both Steve and Phil are soloing. I really like that. They didn't do that tonight, but it sounded good. And it was cool to see them at the edge of the stage, just kind of just grooving the two of them. Excellent. No, that's, that's great, dude. That's and great. then oh. after that, we go into the big one, the big one, go into the big one. And I know that we've talked to Neil at Def Left Pod and he is not a, not a huge fan of this just because he thinks it's overplayed. Right. And I get that, but I'm sitting there thinking, man, this has got to be top 10 guitar riffs of all time. That main riff that they have in there, you just know what it is. And, you know, the intro of step inside, walk this way, everybody just, and then they stop and everybody, you know, shouts back and then they go into it. Yeah. It was it, and it was, it, I liked it that it was this far into the set because it was kind of like a, you know, hysteria is more of a takes you down a little bit. And now, bang, we're right back into it again. And all due respect to Neil, he's got the best Def Leppard podcast on the planet. We love him. Yes. I don't know if you can understand Pour Some Sugar on Me if you didn't live in America in the late 80s. I, I don't right. think it's the same phenomenon anywhere else in the world. I know it's a big hit everywhere else, but yeah. in America, pour some sugar on me. Uh, and I'm not even talking about chart success, which I think it did have. Not as great as Love Bites or maybe even some of the others. But I'm talking about visceral reaction from mm-hmm. people, from girls, when they hear that song. It's something different. And it's it's got a hold on them deep, right? I mean, we, we, we were you were probably still younger to middle aged of the crowd there yes correct yes. yeah and and we're not quite 50 so yeah i mean that song in 1988 89 mm-hmm. oh my god uh, and, and it, it, if you didn't yeah, like it you're screwed because you're going to hear right. it four times a day anyway. right and, and it's one of those things where you know you could ask anybody you know wait do you like that De- i've never heard of def leppard before i've never heard one song oh really you haven't heard of this oh yeah no i love this song yeah every it, it was a big crossover yeah you could not get away from it the summer of what was that when it came out 87 or 88 whenever they whenever that single was released yeah that's 88 it was on the radio every third song yeah I mean, yeah it was it was huge so huge. yeah it sounded great everybody loved it great like i said there was that far into the set it kind of brought everybody back in and then as much as i love fooling rock of ages was the fr- i think that had to be the first def leppard song i ever heard as a young child is that right yeah on you know just watching it on mtv you know with with uh i i thought that the uh shirt that he's got on the union jack shirt with no sleeves in it, i'm like that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Cool. Like, it was just, yeah. And, and the, uh, you know, everything goes dark on the stage and then they say, I know it isn't really uh, Rick Allen, but they say, Hey, Rick count us in. And they go into the the track of the count in mm-hmm. um, from the record. And so, yeah. And then, yeah, the crowd goes insane. Again, this thing came out in 83 and it still sounds great today. Fantastic. And then they go into photograph another, another huge riff. I know that was the one that broke that that was the one that almost I guess almost broke them in the UK. It stayed yeah. all out of the top 40. But a great way to end the show, it, you know, it was one of those when it's over, like man, I know it's late but you got anything else? Come on. Oh yeah. yeah. I love Photograph. I think that was probably the one I remember hearing first. I might have heard Bringing on the Heartbreak before that. Okay. But, but Photograph was kind of the big one. It's the one that mm-hmm. I liked the best off Pyromania. And we've reviewed both those albums, right? Pyromania, I think, was show number nine. Yeah, it was uh, and early. His, and Hysteria was maybe 43-ish or in there when we did that with Neil of Def Leppard. Mm-hmm. But you're right. Pyromania holds up so well to this day. Front to back, you can listen to it all. I know mm-hmm. a lot of people love Hysteria. 
there's some tracks I would rather skip, but that's because I've heard them too many times, not because yeah. they aren't good. You know, yeah, I mean, look at it. They only played 15 songs. Maybe you lost a few songs, but they only played off four albums, right? Right. High and Dry, Pyromania, Diamond Star Halo is the new one. And Hysteria takes up most of it with, with seven songs because they've got so much to play off of that one. By cutting it short, you lost a couple. One from Adrenalize with Have You Ever Needed Someone So Bad. And I guess two steps behind, whether you, you it's off the Last Action Hero soundtrack or it's off the kind of semi-greatest hits thing they put out was. Because, yeah, only four records that they played off of, but... They picked the right ones. I mean, they were they were awesome. Yeah, yeah. It was a great set. Uh, again, a, a little bit truncated, but I knew that was going to be the case no matter what because it, it's it, the show was going to be that long. There's no way they would play a full. You know, if you saw them, if you saw them alone. But yeah, I, I thought that I thought the the tracks that they picked were great, and the order that they played them in was great. Also, it it really flowed well. well. Crowd was still super into it. You know, at the end, um, you know, Joe said, see you next time. And there will be a next time. I really, really want to see them in Las Vegas at that residency. I don't know if they'll do it again, but if they do, I would love to see that. Because, I mean, they still sounded great. The, the energy was great. Everybody still sounded great. I know that Joe, you know, he's lost a uh, step as far as the range, but sure. as far as the energy and, and, and being able to sing for the whole time, no, he's, he can still do it. No problem. Now, if you went to Vegas, would you go for like two or three nights and go to multiple shows? I would not put that out of the realm of possibility. Because I I uh, I did I, I did say that and when my son was like yeah I'd, I'd like to go see that too I'm like well easy kid you know how are you gonna get to Vegas <laughs> yeah right you know I need a wet blanket in front of me your kid I'm gonna go out being crazy which I'm not gonna do but but yeah no I I would I would see them and yeah I would I would think about doing it more than one night especially if they change things up because I know that it's it's a deal where they get everything dialed in and so you don't have to worry about oh well the sound was a little off tonight sound's gonna be perfect every night in a room that's purpose built for uh live performances yeah i i would love to see that well maybe you will i'm just glad that we've got live music back and it's back in a big way because we didn't have it for basically two years and to to be at that stadium i was thinking the same thing like yeah it was a pain to get it was a little bit of a pain to get down here it was super hot the rain was a pain but to hear them play and to see the energy from the crowd and from the bands yeah, they, this has been sorely missed for a long time. Yeah, no doubt about it. You know, that's that's why I was telling myself, like, eh, maybe you should go, you know, when they start miss you, right? Because you've already <laughs> seen all the new stuff. Just go then. <laughs> no, just be happy you can do this. Last year, you'd have been dying to do this right now. You'd right. have died to do it. Right. Two years ago, you would have shot somebody for the opportunity, <laughs> to, you know, <laughs> and to see bands that you love. That you haven't seen in a long time, and you'd never see Motley Crue, right? I mean, correct. That's, yeah, that's so cool. You know, and you got to share it with your son, which is what made the first Stones show, I think, so special because I was with my daughter, and I could share with her, "This is what it's about. This is why we love doing this so much." Like, look right. at it. It's not just be telling you about it anymore. Look at it. There, there it is. Uh, yeah. So. That's what I told him. Like, not too bad for your first show to see all these bands put together. And I don't mean I. I would say he. He may have known one or two Poison songs. I mean, not, you know, just on the radio. Definitely into the crew and definitely Def Leppard. So, yeah, he said he had a great time. He said he'd go back. And so I'm I'm, I'm psyched that we didn't didn't say no to the rain. You know, like, oh, let's just take off. I'm glad we gutted it out till the end. I'm really glad that, that Def Leppard played last because we would not have stayed through the whole thing for the crew. I know right. that for a fact. Yeah. So we stayed through the whole thing. It was actually a lot easier to get home than I thought. It, it was just basically two right turns and we were back on the highway. So I'm like, well, that was nice. Nice. So yeah. we got, all in all, we got home late. But, you know, it was a Saturday night on a long holiday weekend. No problem. You know, like yeah. you said, the, the bed and the fridge are still there when I get home, no matter what time. So I'm good. Well, I guess that wraps episode number 84 of the Ugly American Werewolf in London Rock podcast, where you heard from the two of us, both The Wolf, me, Mac B, and Action Jackson had the chance to see some of our favorite bands of all time, some who we hadn't seen in a very long time. Jackson had not seen Def Leppard since we saw them together when we were in college 30 years ago. Not to mention get to see the crew, Poison, Joan Jett for the first time. And I got to see the Stones. Yeah, it had been 16 years since I saw them the week before, but it had only been eight days in between there. 
But I think what made it special for both of us, besides just the fact that we can finally see live music again and commune with other rock fans and be in a great big crowd, and I was in 80,000 people, Jackson must have been around 40 or 50 anyway, rain probably didn't help those numbers, but I think what was re really made it special for both of us is we got to take our kids you know, to, to pass that rock and roll down to the next generation. People who say rock is dead are wrong. There are a lot of great rock bands coming up, and there are a lot of younger people who are just starting to get into it, you know. And I remember in 1989 when the Stones came on Steel Wheels tour, and they hadn't toured in a while, and people were like, oh, don't miss this opportunity to see the Rolling Stones because you may never see them again. And as the 14, 15, 16-year-old, I had Hot Rocks and listened to it all the time. Got the new record, was totally psyched to see them, and then we saw them live, like, wow, that's what rock and roll shows are all about. That is so cool. And it really sent both of us on a journey to love rock and roll for so long. And now we get to share that with our kids. We've been talking to about this for years, talking about bands we love, going to shows. Now they get to do it. And we might not be doing it for a whole lot longer, but they will. And that's what made it special for me, and I know Jackson feels the exact same way. So you got a chance this summer to go out and see some live music. If you're on the fence, get off it. Go and see your favorite bands live. If they're coming to you, if they're coming near you, take the chance, man. Go out there and go see some live music. If you haven't seen it in a couple of years, you're going to remember really quickly why you loved it in the first place. So with that, my friends, do we get something right? Do we get something wrong? Do we miss the point? Do we leave out your favorite part? Hey, let us know what's going on. Tweet or DM us at ugly underscore werewolf or at actionjack72. Let us know about the rock and roll bands, the albums, the concerts, the DVDs, the rock and roll you like to talk about, you love, and maybe we'll talk about it here on the show. Special thanks to rarevinyl.com, our sponsors. If you want to find something that, that you love that's hard to find out there, go to rarevinyl.com, put in the code podcast, and you'll get 10% off your order. And of course, thanks to Pantheon Podcast of which we are a family of that amazing network of mostly music podcasts. Next week, what are we doing next week? Well, next week, there's a special anniversary of an album that's big in the heavy metal world. That's Judas Priest screaming for vengeance, turning 40, if you can believe that, turning 40 uh, in the next week or so as you listen to this. So we're going to do our review on that to talk a little bit about Judas Priest. So until then, rock and rollers, all of you all around the world, be cool and stay safe.